Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about a really cool remote access solution. Uh, so you guys can imagine there's a lot of users out there, maybe in your organization, that require remote desktop connections. Uh, you know, you need to be able to log in to remote servers or remote uh, resources or whatever. So typically what happens is you have, uh, you have users um, out here and they're on like a laptop or you know, a desktop or maybe even a mobile device, whatever. And then over here you have, uh, you know, like some Windows uh, servers. So I'll say Windows, that's a W, Windows servers, um, you know, like remote services. Um, and then in order to access those, you, you're going to need some kind of a RDP client. So RDP, uh, remote desktop protocol client, that's going to need to be installed on each of those different devices, whether, again, it's a laptop, a desktop, whatever. Um, and typically what happens in order to access these back-end Windows services is you need some kind of a, uh, you, typically you either need like a VPN that people will access or you need like a remote desktop uh, gateway. So I'll just put gateway right here. Um, remote, the, the proprietary Microsoft RDP protocol uh, runs on port 3389. And so a lot of times, uh, organizations or users, I guess, will have problems with organizational firewall rules that don't allow that port to be open. And so you, that's where you would need this gateway that would then translate it to, say, port 443 or one of the open ports on the firewall, um, or a VPN. So you're either going to connect here or here, uh, a VPN, which would then translate and maybe get you in through an open port. Uh, but again, like I mentioned a second ago, you're probably going to have some kind of a firewall or some kind of perimeter security device, maybe a an IDS, IDS, or like an IPS out here uh, that forms the perimeter of your network. So then once you get through one of these, then you're coming through the firewall, and then you're back to these uh, different Windows servers uh, to, to complete that RDP transaction. Um, and this, this works okay, but the problem, like I said, is every single user machine or you know, uh, device is going to need the RDP client installed on it. Um, so that creates some headaches with configuration, and what if not every client uh, or device is compatible with that exact version? Uh, there's all kinds of updates that happen all the time. You've got to keep that thing uh, updated so it presents some security risks. Uh, there's things like, you know, different plugins or ActiveX or Java that you need to introduce. So it just, it introduces a lot of security vulnerabilities um, to do things like this. So a, a cool solution uh, that's been uh, created by F5 and then this company uh, called Remote Spark that create that uh, that creates this product called SparkView. Um, in fact, I'll just write that up here. I'll say uh, Remote Spark and their product uh, SparkView acts as a uh, acts as this uh, sort of translation device, if you will, um, to still give you access to backend uh, remote services. So I'll just say you know remote. Uh, services back here and one of the cool things is it doesn't even have to just be Windows back here they can do a lot of things like you know uh, file sharing or local printing or virtual machines or a, a variety of diff different desktops that kind of thing uh, so you're still getting access in this case to the to the remote services that you are uh, wanting to all along but the really cool thing about remote spark and the way that it does the data translation is that it uses um, the HTML5 protocol, and specifically it uses the WebSocket feature of HTML5, and it uses that for the, uh, uh, for the data transport, and then it uses JavaScript uh, for the client logic to be able to create this whole connection. So now, instead of needing um, an RDP client, in fact, I'll, I'll just put RDP client up here, you know, for each of these uh, uh, users, then now you just need an HTML5 uh, browser, HTML5 compatible browser, which, you know, you may ask yourself, well, which browsers are HTML5 compatible? And the answer is basically every single one of them. If, they're, if, it's, if it's, you know, recent at all, um, every single one of them uh, handles HTML5. And so, again, this uses, uh, this uses WebSocket, or sometimes it's written WSS for the secure WebSocket, but it uses that functionality within HTML5 um, to create this persistent uh, connection back to the remote services, which, by the way, WebSockets, uh, that's, that's kind of the, the design behind what those are in HTML5. It's a, it's a, you can imagine, or you can think of it as like a persistent connection between client 
and backend server. So rather than you know request and response and all that, it's you can think of it as kind of a uh, an established persistent connection uh, web socket. So um, so anyway, so it uses that, but then. For a user to then get back to the remote, to the remote services, uh, we're going to put a big IP here in line, and specifically the APM. Um, so now what happens is any user on any browser that's HTML5 compatible uh, can now authenticate to the big IP APM, and the APM can actually parameterize the desktop uh, connection, and it can even use um, the, uh, the features of like Active Directory from that user that's logged on to, uh, to, to actually create the different parameters. So that's a really cool feature of, of that as well. Um, but nonetheless, you can log on here at, on the Big IP APM. You can use two-factor authentication. It supports single sign-on. So you can do all that really cool stuff in terms of authentication here on the APM. And then the APM is then gonna hand off that connection uh, or those credentials and all the, all the necessary components to the remote Spark, uh, Spark View device that's then going to translate um, you know, which user requires access to which desktop and which, you know, desktop background and which, you know, files or which printing services or whatever. So this is going to do all that translation right here. Um, and so I'll just write a couple of boxes around here. One of the other cool things is you could actually, instead of just uh, um, provisioning APM, you could also provision LTM. And if you do that, uh, the big IP LTM can offload your SSL so this could be, uh, I'll just put SSL offload here. And one of the cool things about that is, again, if one of your remote um, servers is, um, you know, HTTPS, if it's port 443, it's encrypted, all that stuff, you can do all of your SSL offload here on the big IP, which it's designed to do. It does that better than any device out there. Um, and so as you offload your SSL here, then the big IP also via the, the LTM can accelerate the underlying TCP connection that just gives you a faster experience. So it's a really cool feature here. Another thing that LTM does as well is let's say you don't just have one Spark View device, um, you know, out here loaded up. Let's say you have a bunch of them. So I'm gonna put, you know, maybe a bunch of these things. And so the LTM can load balance via all the different load balancing capabilities across these different uh, Spark View, uh, you know, pool of servers. And so, Anyway, so you've got availability, you've got just a lot more efficient, you know, setup right here. And then, of course, this thing is going to hand off to all the different remote services uh, that would be available out there. And I mentioned a couple of them a second ago. There's, there's uh, obviously, um, you know, there's, there's desktops, there's virtual machines, um, there are, uh, you know, there's file, uh, file sharing, there's remote printing, there's a whole host of different uh, services that you can gain access to. Um, another really cool thing that I wanted to mention about APM, uh, not just the authentication, I talked about the two-factor, the single sign-on that that gives you capabil the capability of, but this also does security checks back to the client. And so you may ask yourself, well, hey, is this client, you know, a secure client? Is this, you know, desktop or laptop or whatever? Does it have the, the security features on it that I want in order to, you know, let it gain access back to my remote services? And the APM can do that. So as someone as a user authenticates via a certain device out here to the APM, the APM is actually going to run a security check based on how you configure it. So <laughs> things like, you know, do you have certain uh, updates on certain software? Do you have antivirus on your computer? You know, so it's going to run through those security checks and it's actually going to send, um, you know, or it's, it's going to check back to the client itself to make sure that it's nice and secure according to what you, you know, set of standards before it allows any of this stuff to happen. So, uh, so this is just a really cool setup in terms of, you know, you no longer need the RDP client on each of your user devices. Um, you can use the capabilities of the big IP to do all of these different things to, uh, you know, to translate this connection back to the Spark view. Um, it can do all the security checks. It can do all the really cool LTM stuff with SSL offload and load balancing and uh, monitoring and just all the really cool stuff that LTM does. Uh, but at the end of the day, you no longer have to say, hey, every single user, you have to load up this uh, software on your machine in order to get to these remote Windows servers. Uh, now, you can simply say HTML5 capable uh, internet browser and you're good to go. Um, this is a super quick installation on the Spark View and how it connects back to the APM. There's uh, some resources we can, uh, we can link down below to show you how to do all that stuff. So, so this is just a, a, a solution that gives you more control 
Um, it's a higher security, it's, there's more security with this one, and it's frankly a whole lot easier to use uh, on the user and the admin that's got to keep all this stuff up and running. So, uh, so thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click on our DC logo up here and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.